This week, I thought I was going to be doing a video about Roland Visual MT. This has been sitting on my shelf for about four years after I bought it on eBay because I didn't know what it was. It was like 15 bucks and anything that says Roland on it for that price is probably worth picking up. And this one most certainly was, but not because of what I thought it contained. It actually had Roland Virtual Sound Canvas version three inside for some reason. My plans for this video were to actually review the Visual MT software, but this changed what I want to talk about this week because that might just be one of the best options for doing MIDI sound on vintage computers. Now I will still go ahead and cover Visual MT because there's no information out there about this thing except for Roland's one now partially defunct webpage that I'm the one who actually had to make the first backup of on archive.org, but really Virtual Sound Canvas is the much more interesting part of the video. We are going to start here with Visual MT, which deserves at least somewhat of a look because it is interesting software, but one that I've found difficult to really find a use for. First, I should probably mention that MT obviously stands for Music Tutor, which is confusing because Roland has used MT in the past to mean multi-timber, such as on the Roland MT32. So Visual MT and the MT hardware here have absolutely nothing in common. But not all MT hardware has nothing in common, because the Roland MT200 I have here is actually very similar to the Visual MT software. The MT200 is a music tutor device and is designed to allow you to play midis from floppy so you can learn to play along with them. On the back of the box, we can even see that the user interface for the software is gonna look incredibly similar to the actual hardware interface of the MT200. But the MT200 isn't actually usable with Visual MT. Which gets into the reason I wanted to talk about this software this week. On the back of the box, it shows a list of Roland keyboards that it's compatible with. Which does make sense, you'd have to use a keyboard to work with the software. And the box does say it includes a computer cable to connect the keyboards. Now, it wasn't uncommon for music software to come with a cable for connecting keyboards, but usually they were the more common game port to MIDI cable. I wasn't actually sure what was in Visual MT's box, but the Roland website mentioned that it was a serial cable, which made me think it was an RSC 15AT that plugs into this port, meaning I could use it with this. My Roland SK88 which is a bit more keyboard than this software is made to be used with, I suspect. However, it should be possible to use it. So with that plan in place, it was time to open the box. And as I was perusing through the contents, that's when I discovered Virtual Sound Canvas version three. The back of the box did say it contained a Virtual Sound Canvas product, but it didn't actually say what it was. So I was thinking maybe the Music Tutor software has the ability to play GS MIDIs and sound correct, but this is a whole other level of awesome that again, we're gonna get to a little bit later cause it's gonna steal the show. As I finished poking around what was in the box, it did indeed come with an RSC 15 AT cable. This has a mini DIN 8 connector on one end and a standard D sub 9 connector on the other end that plugs into your computer's serial port. And at last, I finally knew what all was in my Visual MT box, and man, it was way more than I expected. The first thing I did after this, though, was get everything archived, because there isn't even a picture of the Visual MT software on the internet, let alone a copy of the disc. But now that I've done my due diligence and preserved the software, it's time to try it out. Now for these tests, we are going to run all the Roland software on my Windows XP computer, and I have a few reasons for that. For one, the software prominently boasts XP support on the box, so I think it makes sense in that regard. But I also want to use Virtual Sound Canvas on here to check out a few things with that. Now the first step in using Visual MT after getting it installed, which I've already done and isn't that exciting, is getting your piano connected. Now I don't have one of the very specific models of pianos that the box mentions, but I do actually have a Roland Atelier 90S, which would probably work with this thing and be more in line with what it's made for. <laughs> but I don't exactly feel like dragging that 500 pound monster up here into the office. And that's also why it's never really got a video. It's a bit unwieldy. But what I do have is the Roland SK88 that I mentioned, and it will work. Now to use this with the computer, I'm going to use that RSC 15AT cable. 
On the first side, we plug it into the serial port, which I have connected to with this extension cable. And on the keyboard side, you plug the cable in here and make sure your switch is set to PC2. With that plugged in and power added here, I can turn on the keyboard and now it's connected to the computer. I will quickly show here that uh, I'm still using the default Windows XP MIDI output and we'll get to the other stuff later. You actually don't need Virtual Sound Canvas at all for this and I don't understand why it came with it, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna complain about it. Launching the software, we see that UI that is just a 100% dead ringer for the MT200. That is hilarious. Now I can go over to the music staff and we can make sound. Now I have to stop for a moment here and say that it's actually driving me a little insane that it's making sound because I tried for like an hour yesterday to get it to make sound and it didn't. I don't know why it is right now. I'm wondering if maybe it's because it's using the uh, Microsoft Wavetable. I'm gonna really quickly jump ahead here and use the Virtual Sound Canvas. Ha ha! So it doesn't do it when it's using Virtual Sound Canvas. That is super weird. I just noticed this on the back of the box while I was editing an earlier part of the video. It says here, if you use both the Visual MT and VSC, and then the grammar's not great here, but I think it means VSC provides accompaniment only. So the back of the box states that the keyboard won't work with VSC through Visual MT, but why is completely unanswered when it just makes no sense at all. But we'll go ahead and use this for now and then we'll showcase Virtual Sound Canvas in a little bit. But we can play music through the Microsoft one. That is super weird. Now, when it comes to actually using this software, uh, it's pretty basic, actually. We can go ahead and we can open a song, which it confusingly calls Select Song. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pick one of the sample songs, which are all unnamed. That's uh, very helpful there. But let's start with sample zero, and we can hit play. Yeah, I hope you weren't expecting to see me play the piano along with this, because for one, I don't actually know how to play a piano and read sheet music directly to it. I know how to read sheet music, and I could probably play a violin along with this, because I'd know how to do that, maybe even a guitar, but I don't actually know piano. This one wouldn't be a bad way to learn, because the keys are labeled up here, but uh, I still don't have the kind of muscle memory required to be able to do this. And this software out of the box seems like it's a terrible way to learn because this is sample song zero, the first one. And it's a two hand piece that's kind of complex. And I have not seen any of them be any easier so far. And also what is this six, eight timing? Come on, for a starting piece, jeez. Where's Mary had a little lamb? I mean, come on, sample one. Oh, that looks complicated. Song three, ah, oh, that one, maybe. Yeah, I don't think Fur Elise is gonna be considered a good song to learn how to play the piano to. And I think that gets into what this software is. It's not really making it easy to learn how to play piano. It lets you grade how you're playing piano, which means I think it isn't meant to be a music tutor itself for someone like me who doesn't actually know how to play piano, but it's meant for a music tutor, as in someone whose job that is, like it shows on the artwork on the box, for them to be able to run on a computer while they teach someone how to play piano and be able to show them how they're making mistakes and making corrections and playing along correctly with the music. And this has some really good features for this built in. If we go to this page, down at the bottom, we can see when the notes are being pressed and how harshly they are being pressed, which will be their intensity and volume. If I go ahead and try and play along with this. Which obviously I can't do. It will show when I'm pressing the notes and how hard I'm pressing them as well, which would make it easier to tell how well I'm playing along with the piece. 
I'm not sure I've ever finished listening through all of For Elise. It gets way more complicated than I remember. This is not a beginner track. <laughs> The next page is not quite as useful as the last one, as it allows you to enable or disable different parts that are being sent out over MIDI, which is why there's 16 different sections here. You can enable or disable all of the different parts of the accompaniment, or remove all of the piano that's being played by the computer, and then it's on you to play all of it, which that would be quite helpful, but you could also do that from right here, which gives you control over the uh, first couple of parts, which are usually where the piano parts are. And that's pretty much been my entire experience with this software. It is pretty much this with sheet music on a CD, not a whole lot more. So I could not use this to learn how to play piano, but I could see this being a nice tool for an instructor to use when they have a pupil over. So, all right, that's Roland Visual MT. It's about as exciting as I expected it to be. Now, Let's get on to the main show, Virtual Sound Canvas, because this thing is ridiculous. Now, before I play any Sound Canvas sounds, I want to make it more difficult for you to have preconceived notions about what the Virtual Sound Canvas is going to sound like. So let me preface this by saying this. I have Virtual Sound Canvas, I have the SK88 Pro, which is effectively an SC88 Pro, I have an SC55, and I have that MT200. Each of these is capable of playing Sound Canvas sounds, and each of them can be configured differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick four different devices and configurations and play Doom's E1M1 through each of them without telling you what they are to make it a little more difficult to pinpoint the flaws with the Virtual Sound Canvas software. So, I bet you think you know which one is a software, at least if you're listening with headphones. But hopefully I'm going to surprise you, though you are probably right. Alright, now let's check out Virtual Sound Canvas, which runs in the system tray all the time. So, this is it. And uh, the Roland ED, I believe, is for Ederol, which is another name that they release products under. Roland's really confusing. They also have Boss. Um, and uh, they like to release different products under different names for some reason. I think they're basically all interchangeable. But this is the Roland Virtual Sound Canvas. So the first thing that we'll want to see is controller right here, which is awesome because it shows what all 16 instruments there are and uh, what they're currently set to. And since one of the Doom demos was just done, these are currently set to what Doom uses. Now we can also go to setup and here we can see some of the options that we have. So by default, the Roland Virtual Sound Canvas uses 22 kilohertz samples and uh, has these limits for the different settings. So we'll go ahead and leave it there for now. The sound set can either be SC88 Pro, SC88, or SC55. We're going to leave it at SC88 Pro for now. All right, so that's what I want to cover to start. Next, I want to take a look at this folder, which comes on the disc with this thing and contains some really awesome sample music. Now, I want to listen to Cool here, and we can actually do this through Virtual Sound Canvas by opening the integrated MIDI player. So we're going to go ahead and drag this onto there, and now we can see it loaded the title, and we can hit play. This software is so cool. I cannot believe I left it sitting in that box for four years. I feel like such an idiot. Oh, I could have had this this whole time. This is amazing. Uh, now, that's not even the best this can do. Let's go back to the settings here, and uh, we can change this to high quality, which uses 44.1 kilohertz samples. Way better. With this, let's go ahead and try Moon. And here, I want to point out a couple of things. 
as it starts, the meters at the top here are just like what an actual sound canvas has for showing the levels of the individual parts. But this MIDI takes better advantage of this area. Pay attention to the different instruments that are loaded and that, the volume controls for the individual parts. Now, since I'm using this computer with speakers here rather than headphones, I couldn't really tell the difference all that well until I was actually trying to edit some of the footage that I shot yesterday. And man, that makes a tremendous difference. And it's probably starting to clue you into what some of the four different samples I showed at the beginning were. Getting closer to that though, this can do a lot more than just playing midis, but I should demonstrate one other aspect of playing midis with this that is frustrating, and you'll just say that uh, I'm running this computer on a RAID 0 set of drives and it pains me to do this, but I have to show you what happens. This is Vivaldi's Four Seasons, Spring, and it's the first movement of several because these mini files are all really short for some reason. But when I try and play it... All right, well... Welcome to the wonderful world of intermittent failure, because every time I'd previously tried to play that file, it blue screened the computer. And it wasn't even just that file. Actually, the two demo files that I just played for you have also blue screened it several times today. And I have no idea why. It's happened with different settings, with different files. The only thing I can say is that it did not happen when I tried it on Windows 98 at home. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm not sure if it's this computer, some of this hardware, or what. I don't know. All I wanted to let you know there was that sometimes it blue screens if you try and play midis directly. But with that warning out of the way, it's time to get into what this is really good for. Games. Because DOS games make heavy use of MIDI, and this is a fantastic solution. So I'm gonna get Descent installed on here because it has one of my favorite example tracks for MIDI. And uh, yeah, let's hear what this sounds like. It feels so weird to be doing a uh, hardware configuration for a DOS game in Windows XP, but this absolutely works. We can go here, set the MIDI card to be the sound card, leave the default settings and then test. Well, wow, that's uh, a little odd. I'm not 100% sure if that problem is descent or not. Uh, so this hanging note thing, that's actually just a right MIDI thing. Uh, you can click all mute and then all play to clear that out. That same thing actually happens with this keyboard too. Uh, if you route the MIDI out through that, that's just how MIDI works uh, because you send separate note on and note off signals. If you don't send that note off signal, then they just stay like that. All right, so running setup for Duke 3D here. We're gonna go into sound. We're gonna choose the music card and we can actually set it to sound canvas. We'll leave it at the default 330 port and now we can test it. It's not right. So it turns out there's something wrong with how the Windows XP or NT DOS emulator wrapper thing works with MIDI and it causes massive timing issues. Now I do know for a fact that I could switch over to Windows 98 and run the same software and have it work flawlessly with the integrated DOS stuff on that. <laughs> But the whole point of what I'm trying to do here is to do this kind of wrong. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just plug in my SC55 and have the real sound canvas music. What I want to demonstrate here is how the virtual sound canvas can be used in a scenario that's not completely accurate to get very accurate sound. So we're gonna go with DOSBox in virtual sound canvas because this totally works.
That sounds amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and use this for Duke 3D and everything else that's DOS that we want to run here. That sounds so awesome for being pure software. Let's try another one of my favorite DOS games for MIDI sound uh, with Original Descent. Well, combining virtual sound canvas with DOSBox is uh, just mission accomplished. We can do anything then. <laughs> How cool is that? Well, we're almost done with virtual sound canvas, but we still need to go over what the Doom sample recordings were and address some of the shortcomings with virtual sound canvas. So, do you think you figured out what was what on there? Well, here's what the answers were. The first one was Roland Virtual Sound Canvas. The second one was also Roland Virtual Sound Canvas. And then the last two were the SC88 Pro in the SK88 Pro here. The first Virtual Sound Canvas one was the high quality setting with the 44.1 kilohertz samples. And the second one was the medium quality setting one. That's why they sounded differently. But on the SC88, the difference was the first one was the actual SC88 sounds and the second one was the SC55 mapping. Now, interestingly, this software is supposed to be able to emulate SC55 and SC88, but it can't really emulate SC88. If you listen to the guitars on the actual SC88, here's what they sound like. very different from the SC55 guitars. But Virtual Sound Canvas only has the SC55 guitars, so really I would consider it only an SC55 emulator. Now another thing about the SC88 Pro, uh, we can go through a bunch of the different options here, like reverb and chorus and things, for the different channels, but on an SC88 Pro, you also have the effects options that you can change, and I don't see a way of changing that on the virtual sound canvas, at least not through the GUI. So either it can only be done through system exclusive messages over MIDI, or it just doesn't support that, which I really wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. So yeah, it's not even very good at the Pro stuff, at least not for end users like this. But just emulating the SC55 is absolutely not a problem because this is what would have been considered the high end at the time and there really isn't a whole lot out there that uses the SC88. It's more down to personal choice which one you prefer and the better experience overall is probably SC55. So virtual sound canvas targeting that, not an issue at all to me. Now when it comes to the quality difference between the 44 and 22 kilohertz samples, Here's a section of the Moonlight demo song being played with both the 44 and 22 kilohertz samples. The ending of this song in the 22 kilohertz samples sounds like when you turn on a Game Boy Advance to me because the sample rate is so low. It's really not an optimal experience, but I tested this on my 200 megahertz Pentium and it really couldn't run a game and play it at 44 kilohertz. It had to be dropped down to 22 kilohertz or there would be stuttering timing issues. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I'd say it depends on the system what options you're gonna run, but even being able to run that on a 200 megahertz Pentium and have Roland sounds is awesome. So I really don't mind if you have to drop it down to 22 kilohertz every now and then, it's easily worth it. Well, there's Roland Virtual Sound Canvas and Visual MT. And I'm gonna be honest, Visual MT can easily be skipped. It's just okay, and I really wasn't impressed with it. I wish Visual MT had some more entry-level features, like maybe key notation instead of just music staff notation so that you can see which keys you're going to need to press soon because you have to memorize the music staff first to be able to even begin using Visual MT, which is, of course, the proper way to do it, but it makes it really hard. Virtual Sound Canvas, though, absolutely blew all my expectations out of the water. That, I can't believe I've left for four years in that box. I'm not kidding. Oh, that just irks me so much. Getting the RC-15 AT out of there as well was really good, but man, Virtual Sound Canvas is just one of my new most favorite things. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, if you did, you may want to subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I will see you next time.